So now we're ready to handle some uh, more complicated inequalities uh, because now we're able to actually graph uh, more easily. So the example we'll look at here um, is just a, a typical inequality that you'll see, um, but we need to view it a little differently now. We don't want to view it as, as a mechanical process, which is uh, what you might have thought of when you have seen absolute, uh, sorry, when you've seen uh, inequalities in the past. Right now we want to view it as uh, a, a more of a graphical uh, visual representation. So you'll hear me say this a lot. Inequalities always come with a question. The question in this particular example is where is the graph? And when I say the graph, I mean the graph of this guy right here above or on the x axis. So where's the graph above or on the x-axis. So the graph is the parabola that I have in green underlined. Um, the above or on comes from this guy right here. So bigger than or equal to, so above or on. And then finally, the x-axis comes in from the fact that we have a zero on one side. So where is the graph above or on the x-axis. Now, uh, I'm going to do a little bit more work here than it's probably needed, but I want you to really understand that question and see what it is we're looking for. So, if we look at the graph of y equals x minus 1 half squared minus 9 fourths, um, the parent function there would be your y equals x squared, and it looks like it has a uh, horizontal shift we're going to go one half units to the right and we're also going to go nine fourths units down okay so when i graph this now originally i was at zero zero now i'm going to move one half unit to the right and nine fourths units down so there's going to be my vertex i'll construct this parabola opening up and so there's the graph now of the function that we're trying to answer the question of where is the graph above or on the x-axis. So if we take a look at our graph, it makes sense now that we're searching for this part right here. And because it's an above or on, we would of course be interested in including those points as well. And those points happen to be the x-intercepts. So essentially, we know most of our answer already. We know that our answer is going to be negative infinity to somewhere inclusive of that point, union, the other intercept, to positive infinity. These two missing points, this one and this one, would of course be our x-intercepts. So now, to find an x-intercept, I'm going to take my function, I'm going to set it equal to 0, and I'm going to solve it for x. So if I take 0 equals x minus 1 half squared minus 9 fourths. When I solve this for x, I'll add 9 fourths to both sides. Now, I'll go ahead and square root both sides, remembering that when I square root both sides, I need to put a plus or minus out in front. So that'll be a plus or minus 3 halves equals an x minus a half. If now I add the 1 half to the other side, I'm going to find out that x equals 1 half plus or minus 3 halves. So those are going to be my two points that I'm searching for. The first one might be, let's say, 1 half plus 3 halves, and the other one would be that 1 half minus 3 halves. So now when I clean this up, uh, the first one, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2. For the second one, we would have a negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So it appears this guy is my negative 1, and this guy is my 2. Therefore, when I plug these back in now to my uh, answer that I, I started off uh, formatting, I would have my negative 1 there and my 2 right there. So again, the question was, originally, where is the graph above or on from this guy, the x-axis from that? If I graph this now, clearly I'm above or on the x-axis where I have shaded in green, which takes me from negative infinity to negative 1. So negative infinity all the way to negative 1. 
union 2 to positive infinity from here over. Remember, guys, this graph continues up and out forever. Uh, that's where the infinities come from on either end. Uh, so for these types of inequalities, guys, you want to remember the intent is to solve by graphing, uh, therefore, uh, and interpreting the graph, of course, uh, therefore, we're going to focus on our parent functions with some transformations, and from there, uh, chances are you're really just going to be focusing on these x-intercepts since we're generally speaking above or below the x-axis.